welcome to another Off the Lips session. Welcome to a bunch of new people. Awesome to have you guys here. Um, today is a particularly exciting topic, um, personally as well, but um, most importantly is that we, we love um, sustainable methods in any, of them. In any, in any way of the word. Um, and sustainable shopping is um, really, or thrift shopping, misses a lot of checkpoints of, of the, the, the industry at the moment, and labor, manufacturing, bringing in materials, new products, new everything. So um, we're really excited about this topic. And personally, often seeing Ruth with some amazing new piece in her house, <laughs> or wearing something, I'm like, where the heck do you get this item? Just like, yeah, the marketplace like, seems so overwhelming. Seems uh, daunting and uncertain, so I'm keen to hear some <laughs> new insights and how to navigate these platforms. Um, cool. Thank you guys for joining. Ruth, cool. to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, hi there. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth. Um, I am yeah, involved at The Green Room with some creative things. And I think for me, I've always been really passionate about creative things, beautifying spaces, and also doing that in a slightly more affordable way. Um, and especially like since being involved with The Green Room, I'm like, oh, there actually are more sustainable ways to do things, just to reuse things, um, like canvases, for example, with art. Um, and all of this pretty much stemmed from my passion for thrifting. <laughs> um, and this is something I've been passionate about for years. Um, I remember when I was in high school, um, I was raised predominantly by a single mother, so the budget was a little bit tight. Um, she had all the money to provide the essentials for us, but she's like, if you want name branded anything, you're gonna have to find a means to acquire that for yourself. Um, so it was, I was pretty much 15, 16 years old, and I got a job making milkshakes at a film set on weekends. Um, so at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, I'd walk away with my 150 Rand, and then I realized that 150 Rand does not get you very far. <laughs> um, so pretty much what happened is, I remember there was a day specifically when I was walking with my friends in the mall, um, and there was a charity shop that had opened, um, usually we all would avoid it because there was like, oh, this is a bit gross, it probably smells bad in there. Um, we walked inside and it did smell gross and it was a bit sketchy in there. Um, but nevertheless, we dug through a few things um, and I was instantly hooked. I, I remember specifically there was one basket and I found a pair of shorts. Um, I had them for many years and I was like, they were brand new. They still had the original price I got and they were 15 Rand. And I was like, wow, <laughs> it doesn't just have to be weird grimy items that you find over there. Um, and pretty much then moved to JBay quite a few years later. Um, and some fun facts about JB and their thrift stores, thrifting. <laughs> um, there's actually over nine charity shops in Jeffreys Bay. Um, most of them obviously are charity shops, so they go to really good causes. Um, lots of them like the JB Animal Welfare Society, the SPCAs, um, Healthy Mom Baby Clinic, Ladies Lighthouse. So there are quite a lot of sustainable options in Jeffreys Bay if you want to yeah, make better choices. Um, these shops pretty much range from being color coded and sorted out really nicely to probably live animals living in there. <laughs> so you just have to make your choices quite wisely with yeah, what you can kind of handle as a person. But I think there, are, there have been many, many treasures that we found in there, like personally clothing wise for a house. Um, yeah, and I think for us, just the biggest things to look out for over there is, I'm just speaking from a personal perspective. I know there's lots of people who buy and sell secondhand things and do great things with that. Um, but for us, we always, or well, for me personally, I always look for like good quality pants, <laughs> good quality jackets. Um, yeah, homewares, I'm always looking for baskets. I'm always looking for things that can do a lot to the space without being like crazy expensive. Um, and with that, there's actually a platform. Um, it was launched in South Africa in 2019. It's called Yaga. People pronounce it as Jaeger as well. <laughs> um, that's actually a great platform for buying and selling secondhand clothes. Um, it's pretty cool because it like protects you as a buyer and a seller. So if, for example, like I bought this on there, um, they would only release the funds to the buyer if I was happy with the item. Um, when I first went onto the site, it was super saturated. There was lots of really bad quality clothing on there. A lot of people just trying to take a chance. Um, so I gave up on it for a while, but then I realized it's a really a great platform if you know how to search for things, what brands you're looking for, what materials you're looking for. If you value items such as linen or textiles that are just a bit more natural and organic, you can definitely find those things there in amongst all the junk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's generally like just knowing what to look for and spending a bit of time on there. Um, my husband always jokes and says like, it's my hobby at night, <laughs> like just scrolling through there. But it's generally, it's something that, 
yeah, I enjoy doing. Um, yeah, and then kind of moving on to like another online platform that meets the personal side and that's Marketplace. Um, and this one is, I'm gonna touch on, on a more like furniture level. Um, so pretty much what happened last year, my husband and I bought a house. Um, well, the bank bought us a house and we paid them back slowly. <laughs> um, but pretty much what happened was we put this off in this house. It was a perfect little house. We miraculously got it. And then we realized we were stuck with the empty house and no furniture, no money to fill it. So we did what every local in JBA does is we decided, okay, we're going to Airbnb our house on in December to make a little bit of money. Um, but we needed photos of the house. So it, anyway, it was this whole long thing. I was very heavily pregnant at the time. Um, but I was just scouting marketplace every single day, looking for items that would make sense to keep in the long run when we eventually moved in. But also that would, yeah, be functional for a bit of an Airbnb house. Um, so I remember the one day we'd filled all the rooms, but we just really needed a couch. Um, I saw this image of this really beautiful Valance couch online. It was going for a steal. It was beautifully laid out in the photo, it had lovely scatter cushions on it. Um, and I was like, okay, hey, challenge, this is what we need to splurge on. Like this is our, this is our item. But, so anyway, long story short, um, I was a bit late. There was this couch was in demand. A lot of people were waiting for it. And eventually the lady was like, cool, don't worry, I'm saving it for you. I was running late the next morning. I was struggling with transport to get this huge couch out of there. Um, got, to the, got to the location. I was like, cool, let's just put it in. Don't worry about it. Sorted out the payment and I left. And the moment we got home, we realized the couch was very badly stained. It had a huge spring that had popped out of it. There was no branding of Valence or any proof that it was a reputable couch that would last more than a few months. Um, and after many tears, I had to call the person and be like, would you mind taking your couch back? This is not what we had in mind. <laughs> um, so I think with that is just for someone who is a people pleaser and not really a saleswoman. <laughs> um, if you don't have a backbone in thrifting, you should find friends who have a backbone and can go with you to return your cash. <laughs> it was very awkward. We ended up, they like, please just leave it in the garden. So we just dropped it off <laughs> and then retreated slowly. Um, so yeah, that was the thing with, with furniture and eventually we managed to furnish our house. Um, a lot of the pieces, obviously there's people who are great at reupholstering and doing those type of things. We aren't those people. Um, so there's a lot of things that we eventually would like to replace. But I think we, if you have the luxury of time, you can make a lot better choices um, in buying pre-loved things. Um, so for example, Facebook Marketplace also has a filter that I didn't know about. You can filter your searches really specifically to price, to location, to everything, and you can save that search and you'll get notified every time a product's listed that's very specific. Because otherwise you just get spammed and spammed with things you're not really interested in. Um, and yeah, then lastly, uh, talking about family a little bit. Um, so I'm very privileged to have two little kids. My daughter's almost three and my son's almost one. Um, and I will say that 85% of their clothing is pre-loved. Um, and it's something I'm actually super proud of. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's just Jeffrey's Bay community specifically, or if a lot of other people do this, but when I was pregnant and expecting, there were a lot of friends and even acquaintances were like, oh, our kids are a little bit older. Why don't you take these bags of clothes, see what you can use, repurpose it, give it on to the next person. Um, and that was a huge help for us. And I think we soon realized as a family, like we value that a lot more than going to the mall and buying something of a really bad quality um, that just is gonna weather anyway. And I think in the beginning, your kids only wear the things for a few weeks, a few months, and then it's like passing it on. Um, and I think it's always been with the principle of, okay, we're gonna give this to you, but you have to do the same for the next person. Um, there's actually, actually moms in here who've done that for me. <laughs> so yeah, so I think that's just been something in Jeffrey's Bay community specifically, where it's like the principle of paying it forward um, and also choosing what do you value? Like, do you value your children looking like little dolls <laughs> or having things that were washed quite a few times and are quite beautiful. Um, oh, and another point that I just wanted to mention with, with uh, like when you're looking around town specifically in person, like in person shopping, um, if something is five rand, <laughs> there's a reason it's five rand <laughs> most of the time. If there's a stain that you think, oh, well, I'm gonna scrub that out at home, most likely you won't be able to scrub that out at home. So it's also just, looking at items and being like, can I actually save this? <laughs> is it something that I can make something better out of? Or is it just that price for a reason? Um, and then it's better just to be donated. Um, yeah, and then I think the, my last kind of point on this topic is I was listening to a talk the other day by an architect and her, um, her name is Alberta Hittel. 
And what she pretty much wanted people to start thinking about is sometimes we see things that symbolize sustainability um, and we think that is the best, the most sustainable option, but it often isn't. So for example, um, she was just talking about in the world of architecture, obviously you can have all this, this plastic thing and you're like, okay, cool. Am I, I don't want to repurpose that because I'd rather have something out of wood. But at the end of the day, that's just going to go to the landfill side. So it's kind of changing your perception a little bit of like, do I want to have 30 matching glass console jars in my kitchen? Um, and just then everyone will think, wow, I'm so sustainable. Or is it actually just taking what you have around the house and making that work for you just to like decrease a whole lot of waste? Um, so obviously there's always a desire to, to portray yourself as, oh wow, I'm only going to wear this or do that. But there are actually other options and that's something that we've decided to focus on as a family and just myself as an individual too. Um, so yeah, that is my question. I feel like I spoke very quickly. <laughs> um, but that's my question is, other things that you're purchasing, symbols of sustainability, or are actually the more sustainable option? Um, yeah, that was very fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You have to say that. No. Yeah, it's very helpful. Um, usually at the end of the sessions, we open up the full for some Q&A. So now is that time. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I, I think for me it would it would literally be making use of the online apps for example that have those search filters so just saving if you know specifically that in your house or in your home you're wanting to get a new table for outside is just spending a few minutes just setting up what you want so setting up the filters and then from that just leaving it there and getting notified because guaranteed out of the hundred or hundreds of products posted every day there'll only be about like five maybe four three or two that match it so then that way you save a lot of time um if you don't have that as like oh my word i need to to look at it um yeah i would say that would be the best way is using like online platforms like facebook marketplace and yaga yaga yeah <laughs> <laughs> we should all cycle everywhere. <laughs> should all walk everywhere. <laughs> what do you think? Um, so for me personally, my favorite like clothing thrift store, secondhand charity shop is called Ladies Lighthouse. So it's pretty much in the industrial area if you if you drive up that road. They also obviously give to a really great cause. Um, and everything's super organized. When I talk about like it's color coded, it's from summer to winter, it's so it's not as gross, like it's really, it's great, they have a card machine, it that kind of makes it a bit simpler. Um, and I would say like furniture wise, it's always Smitty's, the guy who works there is super helpful um, and he's, they're constantly rotating and buying new things. So whatever you're looking for, if you just go back there consistently, you'll find things. And then also I would say that's pretty much it. And then also like the, the animal rescue shops, those ones aren't too bad as well. Oh yes, oh, one thing else I wanted to say is um, every Wednesday the NK Cat has like a little boutique that they open, a thrifting boutique, um, so in the morning you can go in there and then they have a lot of like vintage items that you can have a look through. There's also, I know the Methodist Church also has car boot sales pretty regularly, um, there's, so there's actually a lot of options. There's a lot of WhatsApp groups in Jeffrey's Bear as well for secondhand shopping, um, so yeah. Mm. Unless you're really nice to them. <laughs> um, I don't think so, to be honest. That's why I think it you takes... Make sure that you make sure you... Yeah, that's what I learned. I think it's better just to go there, examine that item fully, <laughs> really ask them, please, can I just try this on if it's not going to fit? Yeah. And then, because otherwise it is that awkward thing of like returning something for 20 rand or just being stuck with an item for years that you're never going to use. So, yeah. The thriftiness goes out of the Exactly. Then you're just stuck with a whole bunch of junk. Um, oh yeah. So in say this is a super good question. Um, is a lot of the stuff that was made even 10, 20, 30 years ago, was obviously manufactured a lot better than a lot of the junk, not junk, but a lot of the things that you can find in retail today. Um, 
and I've noticed that jackets that were made years and years and years ago have lasted way longer than something you can just buy from the mall. So I think it's also, and people took care of their stuff a lot better, um, specifically at the end here, <laughs> um, those ladies really took care of their clothing. <laughs> so, so when you go there, you'll find like barely any stains, everything's still packed immaculately, it's still super like, yeah, just great items. So. Um, so for me, for example, with the kiddies' clothes, um, anything that is in a great enough state to gift onto somebody else, so like the, my kids are growing quite quickly, so we have bags in the wardrobe where we're like, cool, this is to donate to someone, this is to give us like even presents to friends, um, and then this is to go to the Healthy Mom and Baby Clinic where they can resell it and get extra money for that. Um, same with my clothing. Um, if something is worth selling, then I would put it online on Yaga and then get money for that from that. Um, and then other things I would also just donate to numerous thrift stores. So for example, like most of my clothes I personally take to Ladies Lighthouse if I feel like they've had their use. So, yeah. <laughs> I personally have not yet been scared. <laughs> um, I feel, yeah. <laughs> have I been? No, I haven't been. Yeah, I suppose the couch. It helped that the people were really nice, so they're willing to take the couch back. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty scared of being scammed. I'm pretty cautious. I think that is the thing. Even with marketplace, you need to be cautious, like where you meet up with people, inspecting the items properly, and then moving on from there. So you find like the reviews on their profiles and that, that kind of... Yeah, so my husband's quite into tech stuff, so he'll always like check when their profile was created. If it was created the last year, then he'll be like, ignore them, like, this is not worth it. And we've had friends that have been scammed pretty badly, <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know online specifically, like on Instagram as a platform, there's a lot of thrift stores on there that will be like, we'll sell your clothes for you. So you send us a bag of your clothing and then we'll give you like a commission of it. So then they handle all that with the, with the buyers and with the payments. Um, for me, I feel like yoga is pretty streamlined because all you do is you take a photo and then the person will either, you take a photo, upload it, upload the size and people will decide, okay, cool this is, yeah, I'm going to buy it, the money instantly comes to you. So there's no conversation. It's just pretty much like a transaction. You just have to ship it to the person. So you ship through whatever. Through Pudo, it works really well. Um, yeah. Most things just drop off at the Pudo locker, pick up at the Pudo locker. It's, it's a great way to do it. And then also the buyer can kind of choose what option they, shipping option they would like. And you as a seller can limit them. You can be like, I only do Pudo, or I only do Aramex, or I only do Paxi. So it's, yeah. Or you can do pickups, you can, I think so you as a seller, you have a lot of control over your store in a sense. You can be like, only ship every second Tuesday. So people have that expectation as well. So. I think that is something that a lot of these platforms should actually implement because I think there is, there is a demand for it. What I've noticed in like the interim period, especially on a site like Yaga, people would post a photo of it and be like, we want this item, please contact me. But I think it's definitely something, if anyone develops apps over here, they should, <laughs> should propose that to streamline the process. Um, but there's lots of people who will post and be like, or post a photo from a website and be like, please, if you have this, contact me. This is what I'm looking for, this size. Yeah, it's coffee machines. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if anybody does have more questions or ideas, um, Ruth is going to be around for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you happy? I mean, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.